Good enough. Thank you. Like <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good morning. This is Bill at Carolina Readiness Supply. Meeting with my friend Chris at Smoky Mountain Off Grid. Stopped into the store to see how things were going. And uh, we got talking about food storage. And uh, I know there's a lot of questions out there. And how do I start? Um, so let's talk about some things that, uh, to the folks that are just getting started. <clears throat> and to those that have been preparing, there may be some things that you'll find of interest as we go along. I like to talk about when you first start dividing your food storage into about three basic groups when you attack the problem of how am I going to store food. <clears throat> My recommendations would be starting with rice, beans, cooking oil, multivitamins and spices. The reason we talk about rice and beans is in your food storage is the first thing is, number one, you can buy the most amount of food for the least amount of money. Rice and beans make a perfect protein source. If you can't get meat, you got rice and beans. Rice and beans also store very well for long-term storage. <clears throat> the oil, you, you have to have cooking oil in your storage of whatever you would use, peanut oil, corn oil, coconut oil, olive oil, um, but oil is very essential in your diet, you have to have it. Spices, hey, make your food taste good. <laughs> you know, learn to cook too, <laughs> but you know, basic things like salt and sugar obviously you need to have. But uh, if there are certain things that you do in meal preparation, um, you know, have those spices available. Vitamins. You need to have at least vitamin C in your storage. And I know some people have certain nutritional requirements where they need specific vitamins. Make sure you have those on hand. But vitamin C, if you have food or you don't have food, that is vitamin C rich or you can't get vitamin C, you have to have it or you'll get sick. So have some of that in your storage. <clears throat> Secondly, <clears throat> building your food storage for your pantry, That's this would be the second area. Um, going to the grocery store. buy canned goods or your general household products at the grocery store that you would normally buy. But in this case, you want to look at your, your food products, look at the dating on the, the uh, cans, your best buy dates. Try to buy everything that you buy, try to buy at least with a two year or longer shelf life based on the can date. Now I understand canned goods are going to last a whole lot longer than what's on the can, but this just increases your shelf life in your food pantry. When you buy that product, <clears throat> take it home, take a Sharpie, write your purchase date on the top, and then take your new product, put it to the back of your shelf, move the old product forward. <clears throat> and this grocery store uh, list for your food pantry, this includes everything, toothpaste, toilet paper, uh, all your miscellaneous things, deodorant, soap, uh, all the things you ordinarily buy at the grocery store. And you want to put that into the food rotation. And very quickly, by dating the tops of those cans, you can figure out what your consumption rate on these food products are. So if you want to store for six months, a year, two years, you can do the math and figure out how much you're using and how much you would need to buy to last that time period. So, um, <clears throat> so th this is a critical area of your food storage. And you gotta, you got to understand, this is what you're going to be using out of. This is not set it and forget it. You're going to be using out of that pantry on a regular basis. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do is... Uh, 
build variety in our food stores. You know, what are you eating and consuming right now? This is the kind of things that you want to store. If, um, you know, you don't just want to go out and buy cases of food that you're never going to consume, uh, you'll, you'll be wasting your money. Now, <clears throat> I know this from experience. I've kept food when I first started. I was preparing incorrectly in my grocery store food storage in the pantry, and I was getting a lot of food stores that were becoming close to or out of date. So it does take some work uh, keeping track of what you have in your pantry, in your storage. Uh, one way to address this is you're learning the process. If you have food that's coming close to date, if you can't consume that, you may want to tie that forward. Food pantry, church, whatever, and they can help somebody else with that food. So until you get things adjusted to where you know how much you're using. So <clears throat> variety in food stores is, is very important. Uh, a third area of food storage preparedness would be things like number 10 cans of Mountain House, Augustine Farms, a variety of these food products. These are long-term storage products. Uh, have a shelf life of anywhere from 10 years to 25 years. So this is your set it and forget it. This is the insurance policy. You're not going to use that until SHT, uh, uh, SHT F <laughs> in tongue tied. But <clears throat> so set it and forget it. The difference, uh, one thing I will tell you, the difference between like mountain house foods, which are freeze dried foods, those all have 25 year shelf life. Um, <clears throat> they taste very good. Okay, they store very well. They're all freeze-dried products, and Mountain House Foods are generally uh, prepared entree meals, okay? Uh, so if you like beef stroganoff or whatever, you're probably going to like what's in Mountain House. A lot of these foods, if you took it out of the can, prepared it in your kitchen, you'd never know it came out of that can. Um, it's very good. The August and Farms foods are generally food groups, fruits, vegetables, uh, uh, soups and things of that nature, milk, uh, just ingredient type foods which are essential to your to your recipes. So I would throw in one extra caveat. It doesn't hurt to have some uh, some MREs or maybe some individual pouches of of uh, mountain house type foods where you just add hot water to the mountain house, eat right out of the bag on an MRE. Where you say you have an emergency that happens, a crisis, you don't have time to prepare meals or food, you can just go to that and have a quick meal. Or you have to be mobile, you need to jump in your car, go somewhere, you can grab that food and go. So, the, these are just basically um, some major areas that you want to look at. I would go back to the rice and beans. <laughs> it, it's really economical when you're first starting out. Uh, people say, why rice and beans? They always ask that but if you don't ordinarily have that in your, in your uh, food planning. It's just that when I say you can buy the most of food for the least amount of money, um, you can take like a 50 pound bag of pinto beans. This 50 pound bag of pinto beans is, uh, well, it retails for $58 here, but that's not the point. This bag has approximately industry standard 600 quarter cup servings in it. You get a 50 pound bag of rice. Um, 40 some dollars and that has uh, you're looking at over 500 quarter cup servings now that's an industry standard average uh, depending on who you're feeding children may eat less big adults may eat a lot more so it's just an average um, but you can see just by you know a bag of 
rice, bag of beans, some miscellaneous items for really uh, you could survive one individual uh, probably for three or four hundred dollars. It wouldn't be fun, but I'm just saying basic food necessities to fill your gut. Yeah, it uh, so it is a process. Don't get overwhelmed with it, but you have to keep track of it. Um, I advise starting now. You just look what's going on in the world today, and I encourage everybody to do what you can now. And I don't know if uh, our friend uh, Patera <laughs> on App Appalachian Homestead, she has a five can rule. Now, do something every day, but you know if you're in the grocery store, pick up an extra five cans, particularly if you go, you know, sale. Uh, things on sale and things of that nature. So, uh, another point, uh, people talk about calories. You know, they micromanage, they come in, well, I gotta have X number of calories. And generally you do. 1,200 calories is subsistence, so you probably wanna be up around 2,500 calories or more, depending on who you are. <clears throat> but the only way I address calories is, I mean, technically you can get out, get a chart, Look at everything in your food storage uh, to make sure you have all those calories uh, in your food storage. But my question is, what are you eating now? It simplifies things. You're doing okay. <clears throat> You're getting all your nutritional requirements fulfilled now. So I wouldn't uh, necessarily dwell on on that if you're if you're replicating what you're already consuming. So. Uh, so the food uh, storage process is is something that uh, you just do every day, a little bit at a time, and you'll get there. But you have to start now. Uh, starting when a crisis is uh, started, it's too late. A lot of these places that have products and supplies will not exist after the crisis starts. So. It's time and money, and I understand everybody has a budget, but you can do something every day. It may not even be purchasing something. It could be learning something, uh, educating yourself, uh, how to prepare shelters, cooking, uh, things of that nature. So, you know, just keep looking forward. Uh, just do the things that you can do to that you can control. We can't control what's going on everything in the world around us uh, but you can control uh, what's around you with your family and your neighbors so again I hope this kind of simplifies things uh, if you have any questions come on and see us and we appreciate uh, Chris at uh, Smoky Mountain off grid and uh, We'll see you later. You have a good day. Good job. I'm watching Skype. There you go. Good job.